This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning, but we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 5th of July 2021 and I am 2J. I am JM. And I am GK. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, Ruto, victim or schema. <laughs> in the Standard, Ruto reveals how things fell apart. And in the Star, Ruto calls big meeting, reveals Uganda interest. Mm. Welcome. <sighs> so today, the flock of hustlers, I don't know what they're called, <laughs> had a Hustler <coughs> Alliance parliamentary group meeting mm -hmm. at the Hustler Mansion. Mm. Also known as the official house <laughs> of the deputy president. That is a government-owned building, building. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that yeah. they've hijacked. <laughs> Absolutely. And so let me just get started. The deputy president, and I'm being very intentional here in using the title, the deputy president, mm. not William Ruto. The deputy president is completely out of order yeah. with what he did today. William Ruto can say what William Ruto wants to say, but as long as he is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, there are things that he can and cannot do. Mm. There are constitutional conventions and requirements that bind him in his capacity as a state officer. And these are stipulated in various parts of the Constitution. Chapter 6 on leadership, mm. Chapter 9 on the executive. And today he breached both those chapters. Yeah. In particular, he breached once again the Constitutional Convention of Collective Responsibility. Mm -hmm. Collective Responsibility is a fundamental convention of the Kenyan Constitution, whereby the government is collectively accountable to Parliament for its actions, its decisions, and its policies. Mm -hmm. In other words, decisions made by the Cabinet are binding on all members of the government. Yeah. And this means that if a minister or indeed if the deputy president disagrees with a government policy, mm -hmm. he must still publicly support it. Mm -hmm. A minister is able to <coughs> express their views and uh, disagree privately. A deputy president is allowed to do that as well, privately. But once a decision has been made by the cabinet in which he sits, it is binding on all members of the government. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, you know somebody like the deputy president today who cannot abide by collective responsibility is expected to resign mm -hmm. in any political system the yeah. world over. So as a member of the cabinet, which is the ultimate decision-making body of the executive in Kenya, let me explain how it works. Every Thursday at State House, the deputy president joins the president, uh, who uh, you know chairs and convenes um, these cabinet meetings at State House. And in those meetings, the president, his deputy and the ministers, they meet to discuss the issues of the day. Mm -hmm. They collectively table their different agenda items. And after each agenda item, the president sums up the resolutions and provides a way forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, it is this process of the summing up of resolutions and the decision making on the way forward that then becomes government policy. Mm -hmm. That is how government policy is made. And once that summing up is done, every person sitting in that room at State House, that cabinet boardroom, including the deputy president himself, has to live by that decision, mm -hmm. period. And indeed, that is the essence of Article 153 of the Constitution, which uh, talks about decisions, responsibility, and accountability of the cabinet. Yeah. And it says, and I quote, cabinet secretaries are accountable individually and collectively to the president for their exercise of their powers and the performance of their functions. Mm. So, in sum, here are the three things that the deputy president must not do. The deputy president must not vote against government policy. Mm. The deputy president must not speak against government policy, which mm -hmm. he did today. And number three, all decisions of uh, uh, of, of you know of, of government uh, decisions of the whole government, mm -hmm. the deputy president must abide by the decisions of the government uh, of the cabinet in which he sits. Yeah. You know, so ultimately we cannot condone this kind of culture in government. Mm. You know, can you imagine a situation where parliament is unable to hold the government as a whole responsible for its policies, decisions and actions? Yeah. It's completely ludicrous for William Ruto to be purporting that he should be absolved of uh, responsibility for government policy by <laughs> claiming that other ministers and the president, they decided, decided it. it. 
at state house you know me i was never there mm. and of course he was there there were minutes taken yeah. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we go sit in that cabinet with him you he take his position i would take his position yeah. absolutely yeah. that's quite lazy isn't it as a response it and irresponsible yeah the roles of the deputy exactly so today i want to plead temporary insanity but just for a moment yeah and this is in order to congratulate william ruto and his tanga tanga team the past few weeks have been embarrassment after embarrassment, and sadly, they've all been self-inflicted. And so in response, they have adopted the maxim, if you can't convince them, mm. confuse them. <laughs> but the only question I have is, will this work? So in my view, the Hustler Nation has become its own worst enemy. And Ruto's camp has then opted to saturate the day's news with an information overload. Why? Because if you can't convince them, confuse them. Mm. And so this took me back to a book that we feel is speaking to our national moment, mm. Animal Farm by George Orwell. <laughs> and GK reminded us last week um, that in the end, all animals are equal, yes. but some animals are more equal than others. Mm. And we read this as a warning sign for the hustler movement. But Animal Farm teaches us about something called obfu obfuscation. Mm. And this is the concealing of a message to make it difficult to understand. Yeah. This is done by using complicated or ambiguous language. So in Animal Farm, Snowball and Squealer use this obfuscation to confuse the other animals to avoid any uprisings, and they succeed. Yeah. Just when the other animals think that they have caught up, the pigs in charge switch the messaging and confuse them. <laughs> so for example, first and according to Mr. Oscar Sudi, Turkish businessman Harid Aden was a modern fruit farmer. Other reports allege that Aden was connected to criminal enterprises. But then the hustler commander in chief himself confirmed that Mr. Aden is in fact a vaccine investor. <laughs> so which one is it? Sudi then does a press conference. Ruto is on the radio. The hustlers form a parliamentary group. Mm. This screams desperation. Yeah. But to what end? Mm. Let us not forget that the next part of that infamous maxim, if you cannot confuse them, sorry, if you cannot convince them, mm. confuse them. It ends with, and if you cannot confuse them, <laughs> scare them. Wow. Yeah. So if we refuse to be confused, what does the hustler nation have planned for us mm. next? Mm. And so I'll just end with a few quick observations and questions that have been bothering me. If the hustler nation do not know what bottom-up economics is, who does? Why did a whole deputy president wait at the airport for five hours attempting to fly from Tanzania and Uganda? Mm -hmm. And when questioned about the nature of this Uganda trip, Ruto chose to speak on Inoro FM. Who is his audience? Mm -hmm. And if the DP isn't happy with the state of the government, why stay? Yeah. Why stay? If somebody has the answers, please forward them to us. <laughs> in, in, in the comments. In the comments below. <laughs> so Mr. William Ruto and team have reached a point where they're asking themselves, what is the next step to win the election? Ruto and his team are probably mindful of two things, that Uhuru will exercise the advantages of a lame duck president mm. and that Ruto's clock is ticking and so are Ruto's campaign resources. So Mr. Ruto knows that Uhuru will begin to exercise those advantages of a lame duck president. And the traditional essence of a lame duck politician is his or her waning influence over the public sphere, mm. apparently. However, this declining influence is also coupled with an increasing confidence as it is less likely that they will be held accountable for their options. Mm. So they can act with more abandon without consideration of these political consequences, i.e. nothing to lose but much to gain. Mm. Lame duck presidents have been known to use this period to ex exercise some of their powers. So no more Mr. Nice Guy, hence the Uganda fiasco. <laughs> On the other hand, Ruto's competitors know that he has likely overestimated his economy of force. Ideally, Mr. Ruto should be using the fewest possible resources to keep the operation going while concentrating on his objective. But spending 400 million shillings on a by-election was by all means an overreaction. Mm. It also annoyingly means that in the 2022 political marketplace, Mr. Ruto Ameharibu Bay, he will yeah. have distorted the price yes, for the number of votes purchased by each candidate. Yeah. What a guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then couple this with the contradictions in his overall message. 
As Governor Ngilu aptly put it, Kenya's DP claims with a phone call that he helped a foreign investor get funding of 15 billion shillings from a Kenyan bank to set up investment and create jobs in Uganda. Mm. In Kenya, he's peddling wheelbarrows to our youth as a form of economic empowerment. Bottoms up indeed. Mm -hmm. mm. So for anyone challenging Ruto, the best attack against Mr. Ruto will just be to hold him to account, yeah. pin him down on what he actually means. There's too many illogicalities already in such a short time. And will he continue to leave it to, uh, to God every time? Will yeah. that always be the answer? And are we satisfied with that? Not at all. So we have a three-part criteria that mm. we would use to break down the headlines. We ask ourselves, is it topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking, thoughtful or just plain lazy? I would like to say a lot of them have been quite creative uh, today. Yeah. Victim or schema, mm -hmm. quite balanced, trying to get two sides of that story. Mm -hmm. And whether he's revealing how things fall apart in the standard yeah. or... Did he actually reveal what he was doing in Uganda and do we believe him, mm -hmm. according to the staff? Yeah, I quite like the <sighs> things fall apart reference in the Daily Nation. And I also like that, no, that was in the Standard, sorry. Yeah. And in the Daily Nation, the fact that they are bringing up that question, is he a victim or is he a schemer? I think yeah. that's, oh yeah, as you said, a balanced headline that yeah. is alerting us to the fact that maybe all of this is just smoke and mirrors. Yeah, distraction. Maybe yeah. we should give the winning headline to all three papers. To all three? I know, for actually and being uh, inventive and... Yeah, then. yeah, they've really raised uh, some, some fundamental questions. There you go. Well about. done, guys. A triple well win. Absolutely. <laughs> winning headline. Yeah. Onto the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, where we also have a three-part criteria. We ask ourselves, is it humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? And is it effective mm. or just plain lazy? Can we begin with the standard? Yeah, so in the standard here, we've got a cartoon uh, and here we have an ODM member kicking out his wife and son <laughs> or maybe they're running away saying Hata Ukienda I will just form another alliance <laughs> as he holds a paper and with he the seems headline. angry. <laughs> Very angry. He's holding a paper with the headline Exit NASA Enter OKA One Kenya Alliance. Yeah. And this is in reference to uh, oh to, to the, the, the exit or, or the dissolution of NASA. Vitu Vichinjanga. Vindu Vichinjanga. It's so weird. Yeah. Like, why did he have to bring, like, the nuclear family unit into the cartoon? Like, that. I, <laughs> I feel that it's so deep. <laughs> okay, um, Kaso. Can we do <laughs> Daily Nation next? We have two monkeys, two scenes. One is called Trickle Down, in which the monkey is throwing his banana peel at a seemingly clueless Wanjiku down mm. there. And then the next scene is bottom up and we see the monkey with his bottom up. <laughs> but he's weirdly, I don't know, eating the banana and throwing it down at the Wanjiku. Peels, yeah. Either way, Wanjiku seems to be losing to out be losing. here. No bananas seem to be coming into her tummy. Iga seems to have gotten the point, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody knows what this thing Nobody is. Nobody knows, it's all a scheme. <laughs> oh, so we pack it? Yeah. Let's do the stuff. In the star, we have uh, dinner time, and we have uh, on a plate is a TV with the Olympics logo, and there's a hand there wearing the official Kenya official Olympics gear with a Kenyan flag in the back, lifting off the lid, and we have some medals in the background, and the caption says, it's refreshing to consume something other than stale politics. <laughs> and here, yeah, saying that, yeah, what we're consuming now is the Olympics, but I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I think mm. politics is quite hot right now. Yeah, I mean, I think we've said this. We're almost exactly one year to the election. So yes. this is when things are going to start heating, really up. heating up. So who do we give our winning cartoon I'm guys? tossing the star. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Toss the star. I also don't like the standard. We're tossing the star also. Yeah. With the, do we give it to a bottoms up? Yeah, I like, yeah. Surprisingly, yeah. well done, Iga. Well sure. done, Iga. Iga gives us our winning cartoon. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. But also find us on TV. We're on GoTV, Pang Feet to Air, and Star Times. Have a lovely evening.